Um, we are going to talk about the last section in chapter 11 here. And um, the book starts out talking about um, reactions and aqueous solutions in caves, which is really cool. Um, what I did is I posted some video links to a cave video. This is a pretty recent discovery in Vietnam. Um, I think it was 2011. Oh, I should double check. I haven't checked all day. Oh, it doesn't say. Uh, anyway, uh, about how caves form. How many of you been to caves around here, like Moaning Caverns or something? Oh, good. Most of you in this class. It's great, fun. If you haven't gone, you should go. It's very, very cool. Um, Spelunking is pretty fun if you get a chance to. Uh, it's like awesome. It's so amazing, isn't it? So, uh, writing at net ion equations is another video link that's on that on that material thing and uh, finding ionic charges in case you need a refresher. Um, it's less than two minutes. It's probably worth your two minutes. Okay. So there's all the videos that I already posted earlier this morning of uh, in a in a this. Okay, so they're all there for you if you want to check them out. There's nothing to turn in. It's just for your benefit. Okay, so why did they talk about caves? Well, the cool thing is, is that caves form because um, acid rain or just any kind of rain. Normal rain is slightly acidic and it will dissolve calcium carbonate deposits, whether it's limestone or marble. And then that dissolved stuff as the water's percolating through the ground um, will end up with ions in solution. And then if they get high enough concentration, they precipitate out and make stalactites hanging tight to the ceiling and stalagmites. And um, it's also an issue uh, this kind of stuff is also an issue with like finding sinkholes. There's been some really crazy sinkholes in Southern California and a couple of cities, but also Florida a lot. Um, and that's because the uh, sometimes there's groundwater that's been taken out. So then it subsides, but it's also because of um, increased acidity and the rainwater because of pollutants we put in the atmosphere. Anyhow, if you're interested in cave stuff, it's, it's, an interesting video about this huge cave in Vietnam that nobody knew about until not that long ago. All right, uh, net ionic equations. So here's where we're going. I've already shown this to you, but I just want to do it formally or shown this kind of stuff to you um, basically before um, when we did our little ion lab. I don't want to take the time to do another one. I thought we were going to, but I need to get to some other things, uh, a higher priority. So um, we did this reaction, not in a graduated cylinder, but we did it in the little well plates, the um, silver nitrate with sodium chloride. And what ended up happening, if you recall from the lab you just turned in, um, was silver chloride formed a precipitate, formed an insoluble, not soluble, uh, solid, and um, that white cloudy stuff that you saw. So a uh, couple of things on ionic equations, ionic reactions like this, they're always double replacement or double displacement. It's ionic compounds swapping partners and making different ionic compounds. Okay, so on the left-hand side, of course, are the reactants and on the right-hand side are the products. When ionic compounds go into water, they form ions. And that's because water being extremely polar, as we've already talked about, has kind of a negative end at the oxygen end and kind of a positive end at the hydrogen end. The positive end can pull apart, literally, from one molecule, it can pull apart, where's my salt crystal, and hold on to, this, these can't, but I can. So the sodium ion is going to be attracted to the oxygen, and the chloride ion is going to be attracted to the hydrogen side of a different water molecule. And it literally pulls apart the ionic compound if it's soluble. Okay. So we get silver ions when it dissociates, and we get nitrate ions. Now, these 
complete ionic equations are super tedious because you have so much to remember. There's so many details. You got to remember big letter, little letter, plus, and if it's a plus one, don't write the one. And then what state is it in? And then add them together, okay? And then the sodium chloride, of course, you know, comes apart into sodium. And chloride ions, just write this one out complete, okay? So you have done it once. A complete ionic equation has all the ions on both sides, plus any precipitates. So I've got all my pieces, all right? Very fortunately, and this is also why it's used as a common example, one, it makes a precipitate, and two, all the charges are equal and opposite, so it makes it simple. <clears throat> very, very quickly, you can see in these, right? Remember, positive always goes first, and out ease. So we've got two possible new combinations that could happen. Sodium going with nitrate and silver going with chloride. Okay, so you should have at your behest, you should have your ion sheet and your solubility rules. I think you should make your life easier. And a couple of things that you have to check when you're doing these kind of reactions is what's going to happen when I put silver with chloride. So down at the bottom or side, but there's also on the ones, those of you that have the hard copy, I don't know if it's on the one that I posted for those of you at home, but um, there's a table on the back side of this that has a lot of ions, not all of them by any stretch. Uh, the anions are across the top and the cations are on the left. And then they've got S for soluble, not solid, it's kind of confusing, and I for insoluble. Okay, And so what you can do is find silver, which on this one, here it is, it's the fourth line, and find chloride and where the two intersect. It says I, that means it's insoluble. If that works for your brain, use that. Otherwise, just look on the front. And down here, it says chlorine, Cl minus, it should say chloride, or bromide, or iodide, plus Ag, Pb2 plus, Hg2 plus, and Cu plus, okay? Not soluble. So I know that this and this are going to be making a precipitate, an insoluble solid. Because silver is a plus one and chloride is a minus one, we're finished. We don't have to do any balancing of charges or balancing of number of atoms. It's a very nice reaction. Next, we have to figure out what's going to happen with sodium and nitrate. Are they going to form a precipitate as well? or not. And so again, at the very first line, all alkali metals, lithium, sodium, potassium, rubidium, cesium, they're always soluble in water with whatever they're attached to. Any other, any other negative ion. Okay. Just to double check though, find nitrate. So again, scan the page, the third one down, nitrate with any positive ion, ha, huh, soluble. What does that mean? That means they stay ionized in solution. Okay. That's a lot of writing. That's a lot of pencil ad. That's a pain in the patooties, right? All these symbols, all this parentheses and charges and every other thing. But this is what we call a complete ionic reaction. All the ions that stay ions are listed. And if there's a precipitate, it's also listed. Okay. So the next thing that we're going to talk about is like chemists, you know, we don't, don't want to write too much. Okay. We're minimalists. So why include? 
the same thing on both sides, like doing a math thing, right? If you get the same thing on both sides, they cancel out. You got the same thing on both sides, you cancel them out. Why put them there if nothing happened? Let's just cut to the chase and get to the exciting stuff. So what sodium and nitrate are called are spectator ions. So just like a cute little tennis match example here, which should hit home for some of you. Um, the uh, sodium and nitrate are just hanging out in the sidelines, doing nothing while silver and chloride are working hard on the court, making a compound, okay? So spectator ions are nice. You need to get them in the solution somehow, but what a waste of time writing them if they're on the same, if it's the same thing on both sides. Psh, let's get rid of them and cut to what we call a net ionic equation, which is on the next slide. Oh my. Okay, so they're not worth talking about. All I want to, all I care about are the things that are doing something. So, the net ionic equation is only going to show you the ions that react. And what they react into. So probably some of you have gotten a paycheck before. And if you work 10 hours for, I don't know, let's just be wild and crazy, for 15 bucks an hour, do you get a check for 150 bucks? Yeah. Heck no. Okay, so they take out stuff for Social Security. They take out stuff for taxes. Got to pay our policemen and our road people and all that, right? So... Um, you get a net paycheck minus some stuff. So this is the net ionic equation that's minus some stuff, just like your paycheck. However, you've got to make sure that everything's balanced on both sides. You've got to make sure you write the compound formula correctly based on the charges and make sure you get the right number of pieces on both sides, just like we've been doing. <clears throat> Questions on that? Okay. So again, the net ionic equation is very, very, very simple, much easier to write, much less work, but you do have to figure out what's reacting ahead of time. Okay, questions on that? Complete, net, perfect. This gentleman uh, does another six minute spiel on just what I just did, okay? So if you wanna hear it from somebody else cause you're so tired of listening to me drone on, um, you can watch that, but it's not necessary, okay? All right, let's try one together. And this I would like you to do on your paper. You're gonna need your stuff and you're gonna work with your neighbor, pick a neighbor, see so if you can get this figured out. All right, here we go. Would you please read it for us, Gabby? In the Perfect. So, what does iron three mean, Logan? Talk to your neighbor, figure it out. Go. What does the Roman numeral three mean? <laughs> so, eight in your mask, please. So, Haley, what's it mean? It's the charge, right on. So it's a metal and it's plus three. So remember iron is a transition metal. It could be plus two, it could be plus three. This one's the plus three one. That means it lost three elections. 
elections. <laughs> Electrons. Oh my gosh. I'm so tired. Okay, plus three. So that's one of the ions that's present. Okay. And it's with chloride. What is the symbol for chlorine and the charge on chloride ions? Jack Conte. Uh, it's negative one. Yep. Perfect. Now, iron three chloride. If I just put one of these with one of these, it wouldn't work. So what's the chemical formula for iron three chloride? You guys remember doing the crisscross thing a little bit? Okay. I need one iron with Cl minus, Cl minus, Cl minus. Why? Minus one, minus one, minus one is minus three plus three. That's zero, right? So I need three chlorides. And that's where we use the subscript. So that's the formula for iron three chloride. And again, if you get this and you need to figure out the Roman numeral, you can backtrack. You can go, oh, well, chlorine's always a minus one and there's three of them. If I only have one iron, it's like your little algebra problem, right? There should be a plus there. <laughs> How many of these plus that to that? Okay. So anyhow. Yeah, I'd never make it as a math teacher. Okay, here we go. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to have to add in a three coefficient here. You're writing this on your papers, right? Yes. <laughs> okay, I'm trying to... Uh, you so what this says when it comes apart is I get Fe with a three plus charge, chloride, 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 ah, whatever that was. You just have the three in front of it. Yeah, you just, instead of writing that three times, it's a multiplier, right? So then the thing that's sort of the square um, green is the same thing as the half one? Yes, this is the neutral compound, okay. and these are the ions, okay. and this is four ions in one of these? Good question. Okay. All right. And then the second uh, compound was potassium hydroxide. So what's the symbol and charge on potassium? Michael. Yep. Perfect. Thank you for not saying P. <sighs> okay. And then um, hydroxide. Bethany, what's up? That's not an element, so you're going to have to look at the list up top. Oh, Good. Beautiful. All right. So cool thing is potassium hydroxide, just like silver chloride and all the other stuff we were just doing. There's a plus one and a minus one all done. So that's the correct formula for potassium hydroxide. But when it goes into water, it breaks into a positive piece and a negative piece. So far so good. All right. Now the question is, what's going to happen when I put these together? Well, we already know. They told us. Iron three hydroxide forms. And you can double check, find hydroxide next to the last line. Alkali ions, that's the first column, or ammonium soluble. Anything else with hydroxide, anything is insoluble. So if iron has a plus three charge and hydroxide is a minus one, what am I going to have to do for the formula? Turn to your neighbor and tell me, tell them what's going to go on, please. Uh huh. I don't wait. Ask a question. Oh, oh. I thought you wanted to ask. So iron has a plus three charge. Hydroxide's a minus one. What's the formula for the precipitate iron three hydroxide? So formulas are the elements, symbols, and subscripts. I know everybody thinks formula is an equation. I did too when I was in school. 
Okay, this is an equation with plus signs and arrows. These are formulas. H2O is a formula, okay? Symbols are the elements with however many of each you need. So iron is one of the elements. What's the other one? Hydroxide. Do they go together one to one? No. no. I need to cancel three of them, right? So instead of writing O H O H, no, it's a three. Yeah, you need three, but I don't just put it here. What else do I have to do with this polyatomic? This one's the booger that have to, you have to remember. You can't just write F. You can't do this. How come? Because that's F E O H H H. That's not what you want. Thank you. So that means we have to put a coefficient on OH because we need three of them for this. So, right, we have to get balance on both sides. Okay? So now we're balanced there, but we're not done yet because we got to find out what's going on with potassium and chlorine. Okay? So we know that the iron's forming the iron hydroxide, so the precipitate because they told us in the problem. Potassium is the alkali metal. Chloride is almost always soluble. Those are going to be our spectator ions. Okay. When they go together, potassium is a plus one. Chloride is a minus one. Oops, but don't put them together like that. Hang on just one second. I'm going to do it down here. So that's the compound. Okay, I should have done it in green. I apologize. Okay, so we're going to have potassium ions and chloride ions, they're going to stay hanging out in solution, not doing anything. Hang on. Okay, they're not doing anything. So if we've got three chlorides on this side, we're going to have to have three chlorides on this side, right? Balance equation. Okay. We do, but they stay dissolved. So we're doing complete ionic equations. So these are our spectator ions. If we have three chlorines, they gotta go with three potassiums. And that's a good thing, because potassium hydroxide has three potassiums and three hydroxides. Now we just kind of step back for a second, because there's a lot of information in one place. Okay. There we go. Okay, let's see if we got this bounce or not for real. Right, let me get this out of here. One iron on the left of the arrow. Let me make the arrow nice and distinguished. Okay. One iron. Check. One iron. Three chlorides. Three chlorides. Okay, that's good. Three potassiums. Three potassiums. We're good. Three hydroxides, three hydroxides. Okay, everybody's copacetic. We got everything we on the left that we have on the right, and vice versa. Everybody good with that? Yeah. So you only you only need the three potassiums to balance it out with chlorine. Yep, exactly. Okay, so and because potassium hydroxide, we need the hydroxide for the iron and potassium and hydroxide come together. So if I have I have to have three potassium hydroxides. Ah! There we go. Oh, because they're actually okay. Because they're with the iron, right? Yeah. So I do already have three potassiums, and it's not KKK. Okay. So, okay, so you split it with K, O, H. Uh huh. Okay. okay. Yep. All right, so this is a complete ionic equation balance for charge, balance for particles. The question was, what's the spectator ions, well, what do you have on both sides? You have potassiums and chlorides that are still ions that aren't forming a precipitate. Those are your spectators. And I'm running out of color choices. Um, your net, I, excuse me, your net ionic equation is Fe3 plus. I promise I'll come back to it. Okay. 
and right here has to be a coefficient of three because I need three of them in the compound. Complete net. I should have probably done that on the big screen. I'm gonna back out of this for people at home just really quick so you can see. Because I think it's really small probably when I'm doing it. So you can make a big Exactly. The ones on this that are the same on both sides, the chloride, three chloride, three chloride, three potassium, three potassium. Those are the spectators. Only ones that are doing anything, making the precipitate, are the iron and the hydroxide. And the one in the final answer. That would be the net ionic equation. So is the one in the green all net, or is it only the product is the net equation? The net. net ionic, the ions and the product. OK, anybody else? Good job. You guys are amazing. You're always so attentive, and it's the last period of the day. Keep me on my gun. All right. Any other questions? Yes, sir. Uh, the, the assignment or the paper says chemical equations. No, no, no. You don't do ionic. I'm just, yeah, the assignment's something else. So I got two more things to do, I think, on this. And then we'll, anybody at home have questions? You want to screenshot that so you can see it better? Nobody's at home saying anything. So I'm going to move on um, and go back to my PowerPoint really quick. Oop, so that was it. So again, this is the um, I think if you want to review ions. OK, and again, figuring out solubilities it involves looking at a table. You don't have to have this stuff memorized. OK, you'll be able to use these. You'll be able to have a cheat sheet on the final. The final is going to be Tuesday and Wednesday, 1st and 2nd of June. Part with a partner that I pick sticks for you, and then part on your own. And those of you at home, you have to do it on your own. Okay, so really quick, and I'll come back and talk about that on Thursday more. Sorry, that was fast. Again, alkali metals, group one, and ammonium, always soluble. Nitrates, always soluble. Chlorates, almost always soluble. I can't think of an exception. Sulfates, always soluble. Now, they don't have their charges, right? Nitrates a minus one, chlorates a minus one, sulfates a minus two. I'm not, I, the charges aren't on there, but chloride, almost always soluble. Not everything, but like silver, <laughs> but almost everything. So silver is often insoluble. So is lead, so is mercury. So are the alkaline earth metals including magnesium, but it's not on here, but magnesium, calcium, strontium, barium, very often insoluble. But silver and lead and mercury, pretty much you can just about guarantee they're not going to be. And then the carbonates, CO2, CO3, 2 minus, excuse me, phosphates, PO4, 3 minus, chromates, sulfide, hydroxides, mostly not soluble. But again, you're going to have this tool to look it up. All right, let's uh, see if you can do this one really fast for me. Will a precipitate form when sodium carbonate solution is mixed in barium nitrate? <clears throat> so you got it. I'm going to skip the aqueous if you'll forgive me. Okay, so again, it's Innis and Audis. I'm going to switch to the big screen so that people at home can see it. Uh, maybe. There we go. So sodium carbonate will dissolve in water. Barium nitrate will dissolve in water. The question is, will a precipitate form if the other ions get around each other? Okay. So sodium and nitrate uh, 
I hope you heard me say <laughs> alkali metals and nitrates are always soluble. So they're not going to form a precipitate. They're going to stay aqueous. So really the question is what happens when barium and carbonate get together? Again, you look at your sheet, find where it says carbonate. It's the last line. Phosphate, carbonate, sulfite, not sulfate, sulfite. Alkali ions are ammonium soluble. Any other positive ion, barium, not soluble. So yes, they will form a precipitate. So if we we're going to cut to the chase on this, BA... CO3 very nicely forms a precipitate. So again, who are the spectator ions? Hanging out, doing nothing. Sodium and nitrate, both sides. Those are spectators. What's that? <laughs> oh, off of there. Yeah, look on this one. I think they can see it. Do you see it regular on the screen? Or you see it backwards also? No. Oh! Nice. This year, this year just needs to stop. Sorry. I'm exhausted. This is exhausting. Are you guys exhausted? Mm -hmm. yeah. It's been exhausting. Emotionally, physically, everything. So that's the net ionic equation. So barium is positive, the cation goes first, carbonate's negative, the anion goes second. You don't have to put them that way in the final equation. You could put them either way. It's like two plus three or three plus two, it's still five, okay? You just have to remember when you put the compound together that the cation's first. So, oh We've got four minutes, so I need to look at the homework if you don't mind. Okay, so I'm sorry to switch gears abruptly. Flip your papers over, those of you in class. Uh, I'm going to ask you to go through number six. I want to do number one with you really quickly. You have no way of knowing this. I'm telling you, all right? Sulfur is octatomic. It runs... What? <laughs> there we go. Let's try it again. Sulfur runs around in bundles of eight. Why? I don't know because it's weird, okay? Chemistry is weird, that's why. Oxygen, you already know, but you have to remember, diatomic, awesome. And so are nitrogen, hydrogen, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, and iodine. There's seven of them with oxygen. Six plus one is seven. I can do math, I can math. Tells you the compound. The compound is sulfur dioxide. They're both nonmetals. We get to use prefixes. Sulfur is an S. Everybody knows that. Di means two. Big O sub two. Is that balanced? Heck no. The oxygen is good, but the sulfur is not. So we're going to have to put in a coefficient. And that's an eight. Uh-oh. Now our oxygen's messed up. Is that a problem? No. It's easy to fix anyway, if it is a problem. So we're gonna put another eight, all right? Now we have same number of pieces on the left as on the right, we're balanced. Two elements making one compound, what kind of reaction? Combination or synthesis, okay? All right, uh, I'm gonna give you sulfuric acid really fast. Anybody remember it? It's two. S O four sulfate with hydrogen. So that's where the sulfate's coming in for the zinc. Okay. Uh, ammonia. Who remembers ammonia? Good. That's really good. NH four plus one is ammonium. The compound ammonia is NH three. Okay. And then, yeah, so you're just going to do two, three, four, five, six for me. You can do it on the paper, those of you in class. I'm going to throw in this thing on phosphorus really fast so I remember it for tomorrow. All right, so that's your homework. That'll be due Thursday. I'll have something else for you tomorrow morning for your Wednesday attendance. Make sure you do it, please. How many of you are AP testing tomorrow? 
Oh, heck. Okay, so you'll have an extra day. Don't stress over it. I'll try and make it not too painful. Thank you. Yeah. Good luck on your AP test. Make sure you get a good night's sleep and eat a good breakfast. Any questions from home? Any questions at all? All right, let's see you tomorrow. Have a good one. Take care. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, Thank you, Dara. Me too. Have a great Wednesday break. Yeah. Meetings, meetings, meetings. It's not a break. <sighs> Thank you, too. Bye. Thank you. Come on. Just end the call. I thought I saw it. Uh, see ya.